thank you so much. So today we want to look at uh, these theories, which came in December 2021, December 2021, and uh, this particular video, because it is the first one that I'm doing, uh, which is uh, covering theories, I'll be able to upload it on YouTube. And I will be able to, of course, uh, hang it up there. And once I do that, then I expect you guys to really support Mwalimuya by subscribing to my channel and then ensuring that you share those contents because we'd want to be the number one uh, YouTube channel for CPA, for CASNEB students uh, in East Africa. So then December 2021, David, please share the document with us. David, are you able to share the document? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So September 2021, they wanted us to give them the shortcomings of the modern portfolio theory. Many students in this case here were misled by the word modern. Portfolio theory is your normal portfolio theory, which basically tells us that a portfolio is a combination of different assets, all of them put in one basket. That is, and gentlemen, just like when I started the, this session, we spoke about the pension towers, that even you as an individual, how you are setting up your assets for old age, it must be in a very diversified way. Put some assets in this case here in what we call government bonds. Some other assets in this case here should go towards registered pension schemes. So that should something in this case here go wrong, in one way or the other, for example, the current government that we have, for example, is unable to uh, repay back the bonds. Then you will be able to have this pension on this other side here to uh, cling on. So in talk of portfolio theory, really, we are looking at what we call diversification. Diversification is the key thing. You invest in different assets, if possible, assets which are in different industries for purposes of uh, diversifying or reducing what we call risk. Remember, we've got two types of risks. We have got systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk, as the name suggests, is that risk which cuts across all industries, which is available all over. You cannot run away. It is uniformly distributed. You can never reduce systematic risk. The question here was very particular about shortcomings of the modern portfolio theory. The modern portfolio theory is a widely used method of investment portfolio management that emphasizes diversification and the trade-off between risk and return. If you remember, portfolio graph, we have return vis-a-vis -vis risk. So we are making a very bad assumption that it is basically two variables, returns versus risk. Returns versus risk, returns versus risk, quite a bad trade-off that uh, in this case here, as the risk increases, remember, as the risk increases, returns are supposed to be doing what here, increasing. The higher the risk, the higher the what here, the returns. But it doesn't happen like that as we shall be seeing. However, there are some shortcomings of the modern portfolio theory that investors should be aware of. Assumption of rational thinking uh, investors. Modern portfolio theory assumes that investors are rational and always will make decisions based on expected returns and risk. However, investors are not always rational and may be influenced by behavioral biases such as a talk of overconfidence. At times, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, we go beyond our imagination. So we go beyond our, listen and listen to me very well. And I gave this example to you in my normal classes. You see, if I'm faced with the two, with the two particular alternatives, either to sit here through Zoom classes and I continue being a teacher, that's option number one. If I continue being a teacher, the expected return in this case here, for example, will be 10,000 per month. Teachers are not paid very well. Then I have got this other option of being what here, for example, joining some club, some club run by Dennis and Renault. They come and ask, tell me here, convince me that you know what, you don't have to be a teacher. You can come and join a gang, bank robbery gang. Now then I'll ask them, 
what is it uh, inside there for me if I join your gang? And then you tell me, Mwalimu, shall I show you 10,000? Now, you know, these are two professions. I don't know whether they are professions. Bank robbery is pro a profession as well. But assuming that, okay, there are two jobs, right? But if the expected returns are the same, look at the risk. The risks are not the same. As a teacher, I, I expect to live longer as a teacher. I'm so sure I'll be able to hit over 100 years if I continue teaching like this. But as a bank robber, the risk is very high. dead. So the risk in bank robbery is very high. So if I'm a rational investor, I'd always look at the returns. If the returns are the same, that has got a lower risk. So it means that in portfolio theory, we are always looking at, ladies and gentlemen, investors who are forward thinking. There, is, there are some investors who are not rational. There are people who look at other things other than risk and returns, right? There are people in this case here to them, I mean, assuming a risk is not a big thing. So you get for exact rationality. And you know very well that if you go to this lady's house, you can even be killed. So we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, this portfolio theory assumes that all investors are who are rational here. There are people who look at other things and not the concept of what here, for example, minimizing risk. Number two, second assumption of Modern portfolio theory relies heavily on historical data to estimate expected returns. History does not repeat itself all over. Different kind of economical trend globally. So limited scope, MPT focuses primarily on the trade-off between risk and return, those two variables, but ignores other important over emphasis on diversification, it assumes that all investors are what their risk covers and talks about risk diversification, risk more, who went towards just one asset model. That there are people, for example, like Aura here, who have invested all their time in just teaching, teaching, and we're going to succeed. They are, I mean, they're not able to really put their eyes on the ball because these balls are becoming too many, controlling them is becoming a problem. Like I know of a friend of mine who was there, who's doing farming in Narok, yes, I would tell. This guy is ever on the road. He's no. So it believes, or rather, ladies and gentlemen, to overemphasizes diversification as the key to prosperity, which may not, that's a big shortcoming. We have specialization, right? Then we have here inability to handle extreme events. Remember, when we talk of portfolio theory, it assumes normality, that most of the things will happen at the same tail, tail and extremes. We have got very low chances of these extreme things happening, but you can't run away from extremes. Like today, we expected a normal day. The kind of rain that we saw it were abnormal rains, right? And right now, things are looking like, uh, again, they're okay. But again, in the next one hour, we could uh, again get into some extreme. So inability to handle external and normal distribution and that extreme events are rare. However, in reality, extreme events such as financial crisis or market shocks can occur more frequently than X theory. For example, this portfolio theory assumes that there are assets that are risk-free that you cannot handle this portfolio if you don't have RF. So it assumes that the RF risk-free assets exist and those returns from those risk-free assets are known in advance and will remain on your theory. Also assumes that we have got what we call a market portfolio. If you remember that equation, if you remember that equation, that equation is so important, you can easily get to one or two assumptions from there. The brackets, ERM minus. So that it assumes that uh, there is a market portfolio which happens to be the best kind of a portfolio in terms of giving what you return, that's also a shortcoming because NSC index comprised of just good asset portfolios. I mean, things change. If assuming 20 or 10 years ago, NACMAT was among the 20 when you need it, you've got it. But nowadays, if you go to any, I think it's one or two branches left around here. If you go to their shelves, if you need it, you don't get it. Everything just on shelves, good elaborator. Uh, shortcomings, which you can always remember. So explain four reasons why derivative instruments have continued to become more popular in 1C. Explain four reasons why derivative instruments have continued to become more popular in financial markets. Before David takes it up, listen and listen to financial instruments that investors use to minimize risk. Why are they becoming uh, very, very popular? They are instruments of what here? Risk reduction right? Now their availability, their availability at the stock exchange are an issue. They are readily available. Like if you read today's, uh, today's, uh, if you can just pull down, uh, you can stop sharing, David, a little bit. If you can stop sharing a little bit so that my students can see what I'm talking about. Business Daily, they are talking about how short shorting stock index futures could save your downside. 
So you can see now futures, good things, you can just give me one minute to read through this very fast, and I read very fast, that if you buy political risk insurance, like now shares are going down very fast because of what in case of physical damage to your premises and looting or loss of business due to precautionary closures associated with political violence. Can you do the same with your portfolio? Yes, through shorting stock five index futures. Using these futures, it's possible to protect your downside without the need to trade the actual securities. That's, it is much faster and less expensive. With the NSC 25 index down 5.5 year to date, perhaps it's time investors learn the benefits of buying of 1.1 which is more than one, one, which is more than 100%. It means that your stock is riskier than the market. So if it has a bit of 1.51 relative to the narrow, if five rises by 10%, that portfolio will rise by 11%. In other words, it is riskier than the market index. Now, let us assume you have a portfolio that has a value of one due to rising political risk. You elect to hedge this portfolio using NSC 25 futures. Using NSC 25 index last Friday of 1.1, the following is the formula of calculating the number of contracts required to fully hedge this portfolio. Simply take the portfolio value and set at shillings 100 and the index price. The answer would be 3.35, blah, 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 blah. Quite a great thing. So now these derivatives are becoming popular because they are available. Remember, like current levels, they have a fuel derivative. Right, they have a fuel derivative. Although it's making them uh, because of corruption of Kenyans, we are so corrupt. Imagine it was supposed to take care of their uh, their losses, but again, it's making us. We have a coffee exchange which is being modeled there using the Ethiopian coffee exchange uh, concept here. So these things are available. And the hand, David, I hope you're sharing. So please, whenever you get time, be buying the business daily. Very good stuff. I read all my papers every day as if I'm going to do an exam. Like today's standard is so nice. So nice that derive their value from underlying asset, such as stocks, bond, currencies, or commodities. These instruments have continued to become more popular in financial markets for several reasons. They're used for hedging purposes to manage risks associated with changes in the price of underlying assets. So they're becoming popular because people are using uh, these derivatives to protect speculation. You can see in this case here, like when I was reading this, you guys were able to pick that uh, because of the opposite kind of relationship here. People use derivatives here for gambling purposes, have this. For leverage, for leverage. So leverage, you can use these derivatives there, eh? of course, to even borrow from banks. You can use this as collateral. You can use this as collateral very fast. Sorry, David. Okay, I hope you are able to scroll down. So leverage means you can use this as collateral even. So the next one is customization. Unlike, for example, unlike, unlike, unlike some derivatives, we have those derivatives, we have swaps. So derivatives can be customized to meet specific needs of investors or hedgers. For example, a currency swap can be tailored to the parties involved. Efficiency. Derivatives can be more efficient than traditional cash market transactions. Instead of having cash in the bank, you'd rather have a derivative. Allowing investors innovation, yes, there is no industry that is as innovative as what the derivatives uh, 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 market. So like now they are really quite big. They are talking to us in Kenya, you need to be buying this and this deliver because you can see the kind of political tension that we have in Kenya has seen even the best counters, the best stocks like Safaricom now are going down every day. It's not able to get money from a uh, uh, Kenya market local here, right? Because now people are fearing to lend what like the last, the one that was floated, uh, the 20 year bond that was floated last, we collected about 18%. And that is why you should not really blame the government that they are not able to pay this. And no, no, no. There is quite a lot of confidence that has to be built up in the country. The, the rising interest rates, rising interest rates. Now the banks are better off risking with the common one inch and the SMEs because they are going to get rates of money at 12 to 14 percent, even if it's risk free, right? And again, remember that interest rates are rising globally. So even the globally, like not right now, like I was reading, at the normal interest rates, they let get even two percent, two percent, because even the international investors are now taking money elsewhere where the interest rates are what it uh, really these particular stocks these particular derivatives are becoming important because of what are the innovation they're giving us variety they're giving us variety now please take me down there to question number two question number two a so identify three types of uh, primary mortgage lenders that are like seeing a company is a government-owned bank right what is the importance of this mortgage refinancing like now last week I started uh, my process of moving my mortgage. Why would I want to do that? Because I'm looking at, uh, you know, right now, interest rates of these banks are going very high and the impact is quite huge, right? So then if I go to mortgage refinancing, what will happen? I'll be able to loan. 
from equity and they'll be able to get now the new loan at a lower what year at a lower interest rate and they can also extend what year the dura the duration i don't want to extend this i've got about 16 years to retire from but i would want to make it 16 years like that so then we have banks you know banks originate those mortgages uh, this mortgage refinancing company buying loans from uh, these banks so when they are buying loans from the banks of course banks will lose from the high interest rate they would have earned from this cash processing fees. So banks will be able to earn some fees. So banks are a common type of primary mortgage lender that offers mortgages to homeowners. Banks may benefit from the mortgage refinancing volumes, right? Because now we'll be able to tie, we are given this guy money to buy a house, to buy a house. But now, ladies and gentlemen, that our cash financing company buying this loan so that I can now keep on issuing new loans. Every loan, for example, I remember my house that uh, I took a mortgage over, I paid uh, originate this mortgage processing fees, the bigger the volume you have in terms of coming up with new mortgages, then as a bank, you'll be able to benefit. So you're saying here, yeah, banks may benefit from the mortgage financing facility fees from mortgage financing transactions. Then we have credit unions, same concept. We have mortgage brokers, people are broking uh, this mortgage. Once in this case, of course, the origination here, yeah, we have got now many people coming for this, but it is online lenders, or every lender will be able to do what you to benefit. So please, this document will be given uh, to you. You should be able to read it. So please, mortgage refinancing company in an economy, I've already explained this, to help homeowners lower their mortgage, their mortgage, to help homeowners lower their mortgage, man, uh, mortgage payments in reducing their mortgage, monthly mortgage payments, to stimulate economic growth, liquidity. You don't want, in this case here, banks to collapse because they have given out most of their money through mortgage money. So to stimulate economic growth by helping homeowners save on their monthly mortgage payments, a mortgage financing company can stimulate economic growth by increasing consumer spend jobs and ETC to generate profits for the company shareholders. Like just any other business, these guys are also into interest. They shall be able to earn interest and they're at the end of the day, give a, a return thing under this mortgage refinancing. The most important thing is that uh, the customers involved will have their uh, mortgage payments, monthly mortgage payments here reduced, why the number of years will go uh, up, right? And then we have this thing, like if you go to housing finance today, those guys will tell you, hey, if you want a mortgage from us, open an account with us. So keep on, in this case, here depositing money there, right? Have some time. Ah, why am I rushing? It's 140. We should actually take a break. It's 140, right? Right. So highlight three minimum requirements that one must fulfill in order to qualify for mortgage in real. If we take this down a little bit, if we take this down a little bit, I'm just trying to if we stop sharing, David. I'm just trying to remember, like when I was taking my mortgage, I mean, what was I required to do? Of course, I had to prove that uh, I'm capable of uh, paying a mortgage. So I was required to a letter from my employer. That was very important. Number two, because the kind of a house that I was uh, looking at and uh, given the other loans that I had, that pay slip would not cover any income debt to income. After I've given you this debt, whatever you'll be paying on a monthly basis, divided by your income, it should still be more than 50%. It should be left with more than 50%. They have that for most called RCM Online College, which is the biggest, of course, that's how you write uh, in a, uh, the proposal to them, biggest college in East Africa, having over 2,000 students ETC. And then you give them only two years because you must prove ability to pay. Remember, banks are not in the business of selling houses. When you are a banker, you can't just uh, avoid uh, doing screw that I will be able to do what you to sell. You will not be able to sell because you don't even have expertise of selling houses. Right now, I know of banks which cannot sell. They're always uh, having things on auction that they cannot even sell at all. That's why as a banker, so then these guys here will ask you for what you, they'll ask you for so many things. Pay slip. If the house you're going to take, like in the Kenyan market, the mortgage you're taking is over 30 million, you must take a medical report to them. They must check your blood pressure. They must know, uh, try to gauge this guy. Will he be able to live for more than 20 years from today? It's quite discriminatory, but that you must be taken in this case here to some of these greatest medical providers we have around here to just assess you, to assess you, totally assess you. Now, of course, there are tax returns because, you know, uh, you can talk of audited financial statements, but you cook them, you cook them. So they would want tax returns. Am I able to remember something else that they asked? Yes, down payment, down payment. Like in Kenya, yeah, the down payment, in these part days, I've seen some banks giving you 105% of the value of the mortgage. So in short, they cover the value of the house plus any transaction fees. So they'll ask for down payment. What can we compare? Please hang this up, David. Great. Ah, yes, CRB report, good credit score. This is one of the requirements. Proof of income, I've already explained that. We have a down payment, it's very important. Income ratio, debt to income ratio. 
debt to income ratio, debt to income ratio, you'll be able to read that, property appraisal. Of course, we have the closing costs, the transaction costs, these ones here will be uh, looked at. We go straight away to question number four. Question number four A, question number four A, question number four A, are we there? Please scroll up, uh, David. Question number four A. In relation to international debt instruments, explain the meaning of the term euro. Euro does not mean European. Euro means outside. Issued a euro bond, which you were denominated, you issued euro bonds, you are denominated in terms of UK pounds, uh, American dollars, etc. So basically, when we talk of a euro bond, that will enable us borrow loans which are denominated in foreign currencies foreign currencies. So a euro bond is a type of international debt instrument from the currency of the country where the bond is issued. So if Kenya, we have issued this bond from Kenya here, right? Then this bond in this case here must be nominated in other currencies, euro or Japanese yen, and are sold to investors in multiple countries because you want to bring these hard currencies in Kenya, for example, to stabilize. Financing offers several benefits to issuers, including lower borrowing cost. Borrowing costs, like when you go to domestic uh, markets here, like uh, in card, I told you 720,000 gentlemen to borrow through the euro bonds, especially if your credit rating is very high, then the borrowing cost will be lower. Access to a larger pool of investors, like American banks, will simply there are so many. When you talk of a euro bond, then you'll be able to fly. And you can always structure, structure, tell them, you're not able to pay this time around, please do what you are, give us another two, three years, right? So flexibility. Diversification of funding sources, like now we got uh, euro bonds from Germany, UK, and US. So an opportunity to diversify their funding sources and reduce their reliance on domestic sources of finance. Enhanced reputation, especially if you are able to pay back euro bonds without restructuring. Is credit score of your country will be A plus or B like that. So this can really help you enhance your credibility and it can repay back the euro bond, which puts them in a financial mess, which puts them in a financial mess, right? So there are so many, many advantages, reduced interest rates, reduced interest rates. We have longer payment periods, longer payment days. So these guys will tell you, this euro bond you are taking today, the euro bond you are taking, you'll start paying in year three. That in between, you'll only, like now Kenya is only paying interest alone, interest alone. So they have those loan payment holidays. That's a big advantage you cannot get that could be applied to counter mergers and acquisitions. You see, mergers and acquisitions at times are not very good. They may create what we call monopoly status. And you know what a monopoly does? Like now Kenya Power is a monopoly. We want to split Kenya. Legal measures that could be applied to counter mergers and acquisitions. The number one, we have what we call competition authority of Kenya, CAK. You must have heard of this. It's caught many times especially when Safaricom wanted to buy uh, assets belonging to you until a determination was made and the U assets were shared. Safaricom took, uh, having bad luck, they took in this case here, uh, those customers, they took customers who are actually ghost hot air customers. So competition authority of Kenya yeah, and protect consumers by promoting competition in the marketplace. These laws prohibit mergers or acquisitions that would create a monopoly in Mazanayo. Regulatory approved mergers and acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions, acquisitions. Yes, there is no way in Kenya here yeah, you will be able to merge without going again to this competition authority of Kenya, right? So of course they'll be able to assess once you guys, well, even, even without taking to court, they'll tell you, no, you're not approving. Divestiture, in some cases, companies may be required to divest certain assets on, in the marketplace. So for example, right now you can see what is happening with Safaricom. Safaricom is being told, hey, you guys do a D merger. You guys, bring, and then we have MP, MPESA company. Litigation, anybody can be a litigant. Once you realize that uh, if these two companies come together, they are going to exploit customers, affected parties may file lawsuits. Then we have the public advocacy, consumer and the other public interest groups may also engage in advocacy, oppose mergers through what we call like public participations, ETC. I hope I've given you quite something that you can remember. Like now, yeah, boycotts you can say we are going to do what here, if these guys are going to, if these guys are going to. Uh, if these guys are going to merge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, because of uh, the few minutes that I have, I would want to take to uh, stop sharing. Stop sharing now. Stop sharing now. Now, listen, this time around, what I know, these guys will try asking you a question to do with uh, what can be done from a finance perspective to improve Kenya's economy. Many things can be done. Like now we have what Google is telling us there. This concept of uh, importing, uh, you know, the short term measures now is really a very weak Kenya shilling, right? 
we are dealing with the US dollar whose value is increasing, becoming stronger by the day. And yet it is what we are using to do international business. The question of economy up amid these challenges. There are so many things you could do. Like the short term, please don't forget to quote this thing of oil. Where now we are getting oil from uh, these Arabic countries and then it's lo uh, loan. And then when it comes to paying them, we shall be paying them in terms of what year, we shall be paying them in terms of uh, Kenya shillings. What is the downside to that? The downside to that is, is it sustainable really? These guys who are taking Kenya shillings, remember Kenya shillings is in this Kenya shilling form. At the end of the day, they would want to offload. When they want to offload these Kenya shillings again, what will, what will happen is that they'll still come back to us. So it's not sustainable, right? It's not sustainable. That's something you should be able Even the government, we are going to mess so seriously our supply chain of fuel, especially when, you know, Kenyans, we misbehave quite a lot. When you're given this oil on credit, we take so much, and then those six months, you know, they leave in promises. You promise to pay by this date, then that automatically will become a big, big thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if we want to cure the nation, there are things we have to do. We must spur. We must look for ways to bring international investors coming to set base in Kenya here so that they can give us the hard currencies. It's about bringing these hard currencies. So FDI, we must think about FDI. So we must try, strive to improve productivity. And to improve productivity, we must look for ways of creating employment. If everybody in Kenya can be employed in a meaningful way, then automatically we shall have a surplus to even export. export right? So employment must be mentioned somewhere there, right? Right. We must uh, mention things to do as a route today. I would always think about what year, how can I make Mombasa a free port? Because if I make Mombasa a free port, where I'm able to give this uh, Kenya here, just like how Dubai does it. You know, Dubai, if you have about 10 million US dollars, they live and give you citizenship, right? Come and stay and you are exempted from so many taxes. W why is that the case? That should be the port in a free port. Then they'll be able to put in the investments in Kenya. And once they invest in Kenya, then what will happen? Uh, employees will come on board. Then they'll not pay taxes like corporation taxes. They are working for an international person who is paying them heavy salaries. So you recover from. So those are the kind of things that I would expect you guys to mention really, to mention really, right? The most important I can see uh, messages coming up there advantage, competent workers, cost line. I mean, there is quite a lot that we can do, like marketing, tourism, tourism. Yes. And then, of course, uh, also in terms of sparring our, 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 uh, 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 economy to be very good. Corruption, we must find a way of keyboard who is being engaged in corruption practices. Let's stop this thing at the workplace. At the workplace, those things, let's stop them. Let's get contented with whatever that we are being paid because corruption kills. Like now today in the morning, we have read uh, something so sad that uh, we have this uh, uh, fertilizer subsidy program, which was given to one of these uh, uh, parastatals. Yeah? And what is happening with these companies? So like uh, they were paid a lot of money, these companies something Eldoret Limited, where they were paid. So like, you know, Eldoret, that Eldoret company paid an individual 320 million Kenya shillings. Problem is we are denying our children and the grandchildren a future because you as an individual, where will you take this 320? You even life will, you know, life is also sweet when you are a commoner. Don't, don't, don't endeavor to be very, Sean was to be criminalized the way it is in China. That for example, this guy is called Alfred Rono, the one who took 320 million. And you know, they are putting there that he was there, uh, that he, he sold packaging material. I mean, if it was a, a straightforward nation, that guy should be locked inside by today, regardless of his uh, affiliation. All right, all right, all right. So it doesn't really matter who is governing us up there, but corruption, we must find a way of slaying down the dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all that I had for you for today. Thank you so much. By this good work that I'm doing, you guys have got a way of paying it by subscribing to my basic and advanced Excel classes, which will be starting on the 1st of May. It will run for six days, first of May, ticket, right? And the most important thing is that you shall have covered those Excel areas eh, that are required in business data analytics because I strongly believe that all of us are going without really having those basic Excels. So it, it's very important that you guys get really to support more. Maybe I can get like eight people paying that 1500 which teacher is teaching at the moment. Most colleges have already closed. I'm the only one who is uh, really still having. And I'm going to come up with a timetable, by the way. Like tomorrow, we're going to have a few classes, FM and FI. Here, yeah, we're not going to charge you. There is a girl with a... <laughs> Thank you very much, Mishi. But most importantly, we shall overcome. Yes, most importantly, I look forward to you guys supporting me. Otherwise, bye-bye.